Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So the case that I have for you all today is one that I have been following for a few months but there have been some recent updates so I think now is a really good time to discuss this case. Today, we are going to be discussing the murder of Susanna Morales. 16-year-old Susanna Morales was described as a bright, kind, and loving young girl. She loved her family and friends deeply, and she loved music. She loved to sing and play the piano, and she was also teaching herself how to play guitar and ukulele at the time. On the evening of July 26, 2022, Susanna left the home where she lived with her family on Santa Ana Drive in Norcross, Georgia at around 6 p.m. She left on foot, walking to a friend's house who lived nearby. She spent about three hours there before she texted her mother at around 9.40 p.m. to let her know that she'd be walking home from the Sterling Glen Apartments, which is on Windscape Village Lane. According to Google Maps, this is a little less than a mile of a walk, which should take around 15 to 20 minutes. So, when 10 o'clock p.m. came and went and Susanna was not home, her family began to worry. They continued waiting until the next morning when they realized that she still had not returned home. That entire night, Susanna had not reached out to anybody to let them know that she would be late. Her last communication was the text that she had sent to her mother to let her know that she would be home soon, so assuming around 15 to 20 minutes after she had sent that text message. So, by 9 a.m. on July 27th, her parents officially reported her as a missing person. Initially, when she was reported as missing, the Gwinnett County Police thought that maybe she had just run away and they initially told the family that they had to wait 48 hours before they could report her as a missing person. But they knew that this just was not the case. She had texted her mom that she was on her way home, yet she just didn't show up. There was absolutely no reason to think that within that short period of time that she'd make the snap decision to just run off for whatever reason. So, they did everything in their power to continue searching for her and to really figure out what exactly was going on. Now, when police did first start their investigation, their first step, of course, was to look into her cell phone data to see where she may have gone. Because again, this was a very short walk. It was less than a mile, so whatever happened to her happened within a very short period of time. According to a location app on Susanna's phone, it showed that on the 26th, between 10.07 and 10.21 p.m., Susanna was walking on Singleton Road, which is the road that you would take to get from Windscape Village Lane to her home. Then, when Susanna initially went missing, I believe even before the police got involved, the family found a neighbor who had a Ring doorbell camera. This house was located just a couple of houses down from the home where Susanna lived with her family. This video captured her walking down the street towards her family's home at around 9.40 p.m. that night. But then, between 10.21 p.m. and 10.26 p.m., Susanna's phone was shown to be at Oak Lock Trace near Stephen Reynolds Boulevard. This was in the opposite direction to which Susanna would have been walking to get home. So at this point, detectives initially said that they had reason to believe that she had actually gotten into a vehicle that drove her to this area. Susanna's phone continued to ping in the area of Oak Lock Trace until it either died or was shut off. According to Susanna's sister, Jasmine, there would have been only one minute from the time where that ring doorbell camera picked her up walking to when she got into the neighborhood that they lived in. So, something happened within that minute that caused Susanna to most likely get into the car with someone who appears to have taken her to the location of Oak Lock Trace. Then, after this, a month passed and she had not contacted anybody. According to Jasmine, at some point, Susanna would have reached out to her boyfriend, her mom, or her at some point, but she hadn't. There was no sign of her posting anywhere or using her phone at all, and there were no sightings of her anywhere. Her family from the very beginning said that there was no way that this 16-year-old young girl would have just run off without telling anybody and without reaching out to anybody for an entire month. Every single day for the following months, though, Jasmine said that they checked her Snapchat score, which would tell them if she had sent a Snapchat to anybody. 
They checked her Instagram following to see if anything there had changed. They looked at her TikTok account to see if she posted or liked anything, but nothing was shown to change. Nothing happened on those accounts, so they knew that Susanna had not been active on any of those accounts. So her family went out to the public and they held rallies and printed out posters and they did whatever they could to spread her story and share her image and make people care enough about her that they would go out and try to help look for her. At the same time, authorities have said that no matter what the case is, whether foul play is involved or if she is a runaway, that they are following every lead that they can and that they are still looking for her, which I don't know if I 100% agree with, but they did say that they were looking for her, although I don't believe if they really did think she was a runaway, that they would have put as much effort into finding her if they did believe that foul play was involved, so that might be one of the reasons for how this case was able to progress in the way that it did. Months followed and there were absolutely no leads, no sign of Susanna, no answers as to what could have possibly happened to her. However, by around 6 p.m. on February 6th, 2023, there was a witness who called the police to report what they thought looked like human skeletal remains in the woods near Highway 316 in Dacula, which is around 20 miles away from where she went missing in Norcross. By February 9th, using DNA and dental records, police were able to confirm that these remains did in fact belong to 16-year-old Susanna Morales, who went missing about six months prior. As of right now, we still don't know her cause of death and they are currently working to determine this. Either way, when police arrived to the scene and they found Susanna's remains, they found that just near her body, there was a gun. So of course, they ran the serial number of that gun and they found that it had been registered to a 22-year-old man named Miles Bryant. Miles Bryant had worked as a police officer for the Doraville Police Department and he was also a member of the Georgia National Guard. He had also previously held various security jobs and served as a deputy at the Forsyth County Jail. It turned out that at around 11 a.m. on July 27th, the day after Susanna was last seen and about two hours after she was officially reported as missing, Miles Bryant had reported his gun as missing. He said that somebody had broken into his car and stole his Glock 19 handgun, his military ID, as well as his wallet with his debit and credit cards in it. He said that when his truck was broken into, he realized that he had left the door unlocked that day, so that is how the person broke into the car, and that is why there was, like, no obvious signs of a window being broken or anything like that. It also turned out that Miles Bryant happened to live in the same apartment complex that the friend who Susanna had visited visited that night lived in the Sterling Glen Apartments on Windscape Village Lane, and he worked a security position at that complex. It was also said that you could actually see Susanna's family home from Miles's unit. Now, just to talk a little bit about Miles as a person and his history as a police officer. There was one small incident in October of 2022 where Miles responded to a report of a missing child but apparently he took three days to finish the report, so he was written up at this time. Then, by December of 2022, a woman came out to report that Miles had been stalking her for almost a year at that point. So, there was a woman from the area whose name has been released, but I'm not going to mention it again. I don't want to further victimize her. Either way, she reported that she knew Miles Bryant since fifth grade. Back in March of that year, she had hung out with him since they had been friends in the past. She said that the two had basically grown up together. They had been to each other's places growing up. They had been to movies together with his past girlfriends and things like that. So them hanging out was sort of them just reconnecting as friends at that time. She never thought that there was anything between them since again, she was always the person that was hanging out with Miles and his girlfriends. So, she was never considered as someone who he was romantically interested in. However, after she hung out with him that one time, he started showing up at her apartment unannounced and uninvited. In one report, she said that while she was at work, she got a call from Miles asking her if she was home and she said no, she was at work. 
She asked him what he wanted and he told her nothing, that he was just checking in on her. But when she got home that day from work, she saw that her door had been kicked in. At first, she thought that it was someone else who had previously been stalking her, I guess, before this. That poor woman, if she's had multiple stalkers at this point in her life. But either way, she said that a neighbor ended up coming to her and letting her know that this neighbor saw a man coming to her apartment and putting his ear to the door to listen in and see if she was home, doing things like that repeatedly within the past couple of weeks. She said that on the day that her door was kicked in, the neighbor actually saw the same man knocking on the door, messing with the doorknob, and trying to break in. The neighbor got a video of this man on other occasions lurking around her door, yanking on the doorknob, and trying to see if anybody was home when she wasn't, when she was at work. So, after this, this witness thought that it most likely was Miles doing this, so you know, when she initially got the call from Miles saying, you know, I'm just checking in on you. And then when she saw that her door had been kicked in, she didn't really make this connection that it could have been him until this neighbor reported seeing somebody that looked like him basically stalking her and lurking around her door. So after this, she stopped communicating with him. After that, Miles showed up one more time in October and two more times in December, all of which I believe were caught on video either from the neighbor recording him or her capturing him on her Ring doorbell camera that she had just recently gotten. In the December incidents, videos captured him trying to cover his face and then pulling on the door handle of the apartment before knocking to see probably if he could come in without actually knowing if anybody was home. In one incident, this woman reports that she had been hiding in her apartment with her boyfriend this time. Like I said, she had just recently gotten a door camera and she also bought a gun because of how scared of Miles she was. So, on this day, both her and her boyfriend had their guns just hiding inside, waiting to see if Miles was going to break in and try to harm her. Luckily, I don't think he ended up breaking in at this time. She reported all of this to the police, basically saying that she was afraid for her life. She said that she was scared that Miles was going to rape her or harm her in some other way. When I saw him on camera and saw what he was capable of and doing, trying to break in, it had me very scared for my life, so I would have been the first victim that they knew about had he got in and I was home. He did get to Susanna, and then he came back for me in December. So I feel like if had they investigated my, my case more, Susanna could have been here, and I do want him to be punished for his actions. So after this report, once again, Miles was a police officer, so other officers at a station asked Miles about the situation, and Miles told them that he was just going there to check in on her and that he didn't have any intention of harming her. Then he promised that he would stop contacting her. So, because of this, a report was written with the police department in regards to this behavior, but a detective was never assigned to this case. The police would later come out to say that they talked to Miles about the behavior and that he understood that it needed to stop, and that's really all they did about the situation. They didn't really investigate it further. They didn't, you know, follow up on anything. They just sort of told him to stop. He said he would, and that was it. Which, to me, if you have to tell somebody that going to somebody's house unannounced, kicking in their door, jiggling on their door handle to see if it's open, and lurking around the door and calling them to see if they're home when they've told you that they're not, I don't think you should have to tell someone not to do those things, but that's just me. Then other neighbors who lived by Miles reported that in the months after the murder of Susanna and subsequently finding her body, he acted completely normally. His demeanor had not changed at all. Neighbors said that Miles even personally introduced himself to others around the complex as a police officer multiple times. One other neighbor said that he was always smiling, laughing, and living his life as he always did in the months after Susanna's disappearance. Neighbors also showed news reporters videos that they captured of police taking a bedsheet from Miles's car, then going on to tow his car out of the parking lot. I also saw that police also took Miles's police car into custody for investigation as well. 
The neighbor said that really it was just this eerie feeling knowing that somebody who acted so normally, somebody who lived their life so normally and seemed so happy was acting like that after allegedly just murdering a young girl. So many people couldn't believe that somebody like that could be so heartless. So by February 13th of 2023, after finding Susanna's remains, Miles Bryant was actually arrested and charged with concealing a death and false reporting of a crime. So they didn't think that his report of somebody stealing his gun or breaking into his car was legit. At this time, he was not charged with any other counts. However, by February 14th, he went in front of a judge for his first court appearance. In that hearing, the officers claim that they are suspecting Miles of rape, murder, and other felonies. They cited how close he lived from where Susanna went missing. They believe that at some point between 10 and 10.30 p.m. on July 26th, that Susanna was somehow convinced to get into the car with Miles and that at some point he killed her, possibly raped her, and then dumped her naked body in the woods where it would later be found. We learned today that Bryant was denied bond for the second time since being arrested after getting these latest charges upgraded to murder and kidnapping. The former officer appeared calm in court, addressing the judge with no sir and yes sir, barely reacting when his new charges were read. Mr. Miles, I'm Judge Brogdon. Uh, you have two added felony charges. Do you know why you're here, sir? Yes, sir. And do you know what those new charges are? Yes, sir. In the arrest warrant application, the officers state that they don't know how Susanna died yet, but they don't believe that she was shot, and it's not clear whether or not she was sexually assaulted, but they stated that it is very possible. But what they do know is that she died at the hands of Miles Bryant, but they are still investigating a motive, but they did say that it is entirely possible that Miles had been watching Susanna before her death. Again, we know that he's had this very recent history, literally. It seemed that it started before he killed Susanna, allegedly, before he allegedly killed Susanna, and then continued after and nothing really about it changed so it seems that he was probably stalking two if not more women at the same time and allegedly killed one of them. So again we know that he had this very recent history of stalking another young woman who he had been friends with so using that police believe that it could be a similar situation here. So by February 16th, his charges were upped to felony murder and kidnapping. Of course, after the felony charges were issued, he was fired from the police department and the National Guard are in the process of discharging him as well. Police have also said that after Susanna's body was discovered, they are reopening the case of stalking in regards to that other woman, which to me is a very frustrating aspect of this case and so many like it. It's always after these people do something horrible that they're finally made to take accountability. It's never when they show these concerning behaviors like stalking someone and trying to break into their homes. It's always so frustrating but not surprising at all when I hear that these cases where someone murders someone and just before that they were stalking somebody else and in those cases the stalking is literally never taken seriously. It may be a crazy coincidence, but I never hear cases of murder where someone who is a stalker was cracked down on by the police and actually charged with stalking and threatening behaviors. It's always the one where the victim wasn't taken seriously and the perpetrator wasn't charged with anything and just giving these, you know, verbal warnings that the person goes on to kill somebody. It doesn't seem like a coincidence to me. So that is all that we know right now. I don't yet know when he will go in for his preliminary hearing in relation to these charges since they are so fresh. But as always, I will try to keep you all updated whenever I find out any updates on this case. I also want to share that Susanna's family has created a website called justiceforsusanna.com where they keep up to date on everything that happens in this case. They have a GoFundMe that you can donate to help out with the funeral as well as other costs that they incur as a result of the investigation. They also have a petition that you can sign as well. In the petition, they list four demands from the police department as they do what they can to fight for justice. 
their four demands are as follows. We demand a fair and transparent investigation from the Doraville County Police Department. We demand all charges filed against Miles. We demand Miles be convicted of first-degree murder. We demand acknowledgement that Title 35 of the Georgia Code was violated when the officers told us to wait 48 hours before reporting Susanna as missing. They said that they're trying to help get as much information as possible about the suspect, Miles Bryant. They want to know exactly what happened, what kind of person he is, his demeanor that night or the surrounding days, as well as any other relevant history of violence or other concerning behaviors. They have asked that anybody who has a tip to please contact the GCPD detectives at 770-513-5300, or if you wish to remain anonymous, please contact the Crime Stoppers Greater Atlanta at 404-577-TIPS, that's 8477, or visit crimestopatl.com. So that is all of the information that I have on today's video, but before I close out, there is one final thought that I have. They have said that they didn't think that Susanna had been shot based on their preliminary findings, but again, we know that his gun was found right next to her body, so that makes me wonder if he was transporting her body, allegedly, and his gun, like, fell out of his holster or something like that, and when he noticed, that's when he reported it as missing, or if he did shoot her and there's just no signs of it on her skeleton, that could also be possible, but I am really looking forward to hearing what we find out about the autopsy and everything else that they're doing in this investigation. Again, I know it's very early, but as with any recent case, I will keep you all as up to date as I can. But I do want you to go ahead and check out the Justice for Susanna website, which will be listed down below. But with that, that is where I am going to end today's video, and now I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that Miles Bryant is the guy for this or do you think police are looking in the wrong direction? What do you think happened in this situation? Let me know this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and turn the notification bells to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send those suggestions to my Google form, which I have listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time.